Hello and welcome to Larissa's Kitchen. Let's make some pastries. I made the crescent roll dough version of these danishes, although crescent roll sheets are in short supply. So today I'm making these danishes from scratch. Now many of these baking ingredients are becoming more and more difficult to find, so let's see what we're going to need. This pastry dough is fairly simple to make, although finding your favorite brand of flour may be nearly impossible. I've taken to rationing the King Arthur flour for breads and pastries. As always, all these ingredients are listed over here, as well as the full recipe and instructions in the description box below. Now this particular pastry dough is going together much differently than any other dough I've put together. So let's see how we're gonna make it. We start by proofing our yeast in a quarter cup of warm water. Actually it won't. This will take just a couple of minutes for it to get nice and bubbly. Once this starts to bubble, we can add in the rest of our wet ingredients. So we're adding in our room temperature milk, the sugar, the salt, and our room temperature egg. Remember, one sharp wrap on a flat surface, not on the edge of your bowl. And then we're just gonna whisk this to combine. I have all two and a half cups of flour in here. Now I fluff and scoop my flour and it works out to about 140 grams per cup. So this is right around 350 grams. We're putting in all the butter and this is very cold. It's also been cut into small pieces so that the uh, food processor doesn't have to do quite so much work. The less we work this, the better because we want our butter to stay in big chunks. Then we're just gonna pulse this to combine. Okay, so that was about 10 pulses. And you can see our flour is mixed all together and we still have some fairly decent sized chunks of butter in here. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we're just gonna put all of this into our wet ingredients. So however you have to make it work. Then this we are just stirring until it's barely moistened. We don't want to develop any of the gluten in here. This is not bread, this is pastry dough. Once this comes together, this is gonna to get turned out on the granite, basically pushed into a circle, and then wrapped in plastic wrap. Okay, this is still just a little bit wet, so I need to add just a little more flour. Not much, maybe just a tablespoon. Okay, that looks better. Okay, I have my piece of plastic wrap down here. We're just gonna pour this all out onto it. Okay, we'll get this into shape here. I don't wanna work it too much because I don't wanna melt any of that butter. So I'm just gonna try to form it into a little bit of a square. All right, that's fine. And then we're just gonna tightly wrap this with plastic wrap. Now 
Then this is going in the refrigerator for at least three hours to firm up. You could leave it in the refrigerator overnight. I'm rolling out this dough on a floured surface. We'll be folding it in thirds three separate times in a process that's known as lamination. Now the butter needs to be very cold, so if at any time you feel like your butter pieces are starting to melt, just rewrap the dough and put it in the refrigerator for another 30 minutes. Then take it out and finish its laminating process. Last, this is getting folded in half, so there will be a total of 54 layers. And you can still see all the little pieces of butter in here. This is going back in the refrigerator for another three hours or overnight. Okay, my dough is a little puffy because it's been in the refrigerator for an extra day. We're gonna work with this half at a time and the other half is going back in the refrigerator. Okay, so this is a little sticky. So we will be putting down flour top and bottom. This is parchment paper. We'll be rolling it out on the parchment paper and then transferring everything to our baking sheet in the, to go in the oven. Okay, so this needs to be rolled into a long 12 by six inch rectangle. You can see all our nice little flecks of butter. This is gonna be very flaky and tender. We're using a pizza wheel to cut this dough. So we're gonna cut off two triangles from the top. And we're gonna make two little triangle indentions in the bottom. And this is just for folding. This particular Danish is gonna be a cherry cheese Danish. So I'm using my tart cherry pie filling along with the cream cheese filling from the previous Danish recipe. I'll include all of this in the description box below. Okay, again, we wanna smooth this out. And we're topping this with cherry pie filling. Now again, you can use as much as you want, but I don't like to put in too much, otherwise the fruit goes everywhere. So probably about a cup of it. Oh, this smells so good. And then we're following this line to make our cuts in our Danish. Okay, and now we fold this over starting at the top. Okay, I'm gonna tuck this under a little bit. This egg wash is just one large egg and one tablespoon of water. This is getting brushed on the dough. Once we've got this covered, we're going to let it rest for 15 minutes while we preheat the oven to 400 degrees.
This half is getting made into individual danishes, so more flour. This is getting rolled out into a 12 by 8 inch piece. And again, we are using the pizza wheel to cut this. So first in half down the middle, and then into thirds. And then I'm just gonna move these apart just a little bit on this sheet here. Okay, so four of these are getting a cheese filling along with some fruit. And if you remember your danishes from Sunday school from the 1970s, there was just a little bit of filling in the middle. Okay, so two of them are gonna be cherry cheese. One is going to be blueberry and cheese. One is going to be lemon curd and cheese. And don't worry, this lemon curd is going to be a recipe. And the last two are going to be apple and uh, brown sugar crumble topping. And this is just pie filling straight from a can. All of the other stuff I did make. And like our long braid, we're gonna brush this with egg wash just along the outsides. I'm glazing this with exactly the same glaze from the other one. It's just a cup of powdered sugar and about two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. This process is significantly more complex than just using the crescent roll sheets. And I wouldn't try it if this is your first time out and you're not already an accomplished baker. Now if you are and you have the time, it's definitely worth it. Let's give this a taste. And again, if you can, uh, if you want to eat this by hand, you can. Otherwise, it's much easier with a fork. And the dog is begging me to go out. Mmm. That dough is so much better. Perfect. Thank you for visiting Larissa's Kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, give the like button a click and don't forget to leave a comment. We're always happy to hear from you. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and don't keep us a secret. Share our videos with your friends and family. You can follow us on Facebook for behind the scenes pics and videos and on Twitter for upcoming videos and the random cat picture.